But welcome everyone to the MESS Pathways event. We are very lucky to have some representatives from Stop One and from Faculty Day to help us out and basically to let all undergrad students know from pretty much any course, but major, majorly from Bachelor of Science, on how exactly to get into a Master of Engineering. Today we'll be covering a brief introduction of pretty much everything we need to know in order to get into the Master's course. So I guess without further ado, I'll pass on to Christina and she's going to be helping us out and give us a presentation telling you guys how to get into the Master of Engineering. Thanks, Sean. Um, my name is Christina. I work in the course planning team and I've got my colleague here, Vic. Vic. Um, so I think I, is that, we've got one student with us. Um, so, yeah, so Vic, if you've got any questions, you feel free to pop the questions in chat and Vic will be able to assist you. Um, let me share my screen quickly. Okay, can everyone see? Okay, yep. so as Sean said today, our main focus is looking at a pathway to get into Master of Engineering, especially mechanical and mechatronic specialization. Now in today's session, we're gonna cover, I'll give a very brief introduction what we do. Um, and so there are some bachelors where you can study engineering as a major. And also what if the student is not in a bachelor degree that has engineering major. So we're gonna be looking at that and also we're gonna be looking at the minimum entry requirement and briefly touch, touch on how to apply. And the last part, I'm hopefully everyone knows how to contact us or how to book an appointment with a course advisor. Now, what do we do? So we mainly, our job is to do, uh, we, we advise on course structures and requirements and for different bachelor courses, even masters, we help the student to look at the prerequisite for the majors. And if you're a bachelor student, what we potentially can look at is any graduate studies or pathway studies that you can enter within Melbourne University. Um, and also we looked at ex enrichment opportunities such as exchange or study abroad. Or if you're a bachelor students, we also advise on if you want to do a concurrent diploma. Um, so we're sort of making sure that you are meeting the structures of your main degree when you go on exchange. And Obviously, lastly, the most important thing is that we make sure that you're on track to graduate. Now, engineering uh, within bachelor degree. So there are three main bachelor degrees that has engineering as major uh, for their majors. So one of the popular ones, obviously, Bachelor of Science, um, where you've got quite a few ma uh, engineering majors within that degree. And we have Bachelor of Biomedicine, where students will be going into the biomedical engineering discipline and whereas for bachelor design we are we've got mechanical and software engineering and when it comes to doing a bachelor degree with an engineering major what are the things that we need to look out for um, obviously the main thing is to kind of decide on okay what engineering major I would like to do and what's available in the course and Generally speaking, you don't really need to decide if you want to get goal because the way all these special degrees are designed, your first year and second year subjects will kind of allow you to enter into several different engineering streams. Um, and because as we know for engineering, the first year subject generally talking about like say physics or like calculus to linear algebra. So these are pretty much the same um, throughout all the different engineering major within the Bachelor of Science. And the, uh, the second thing we all normally need to sort of look at is your high school math. So for student that hasn't done specialist math three and four in their high school, um, they would have to pick up Calculus 1 to fulfill the Calculus 2 and Linear Algebra prerequisite. 
uh, certain engineering specialization might not require you to do calculus two and linear algebra, but most of like say mechanical, uh, mechatronic, for example, they you do need to go into calc two and linear algebra, um, and because there's that extra calculus one subject you need to do, so it kind of requires a bit of planning if you have only done um, method three and four. Um, and yeah, obviously important thing is the prerequisite for the major that you would like to do. And the last point um, I like always like to sort of point out to students is that when you looked at different majors, it's also kind of important to see what sort of elective or a breadth subject that can that you can pick throughout your bachelor degree to complement your major. For example, um, I had a student that wanting to do um, software engineering. So what they kind of focus on is some of the um, user interfacing subjects that they potentially can do as their breath within Bachelor of Design. So that kind of would help them to tailor their focus or their specialization a little bit more. And um, so if the student's done a major in uh, uh, sorry, an engineering major within their bachelor and entering into the master of engineering within the same discipline, then they would be able to go straight into the 200 points. So essentially it's three years bachelor degree and you finish your master in two years. So it's three plus two. Um, so here I've got uh, sort of a sample study plan for students that want to get into mechanical system major. It's like I, I mentioned previously, it's kind of straightforward in a way that, so you need to have done the first year math subjects and for mechanical, obviously you need to have done the physics. And for those sort of two engineering subjects, again, that will kind of complement your, your um, the majors that you like to go in. Um, and then of, depending on the, specialization or the majors you want to go in then um, your second year subjects will change slightly then you move on to your third year subjects and hopefully i'm not sure if everyone knows but normally so the third year bachelor degree core subjects are essentially or, or and also the second year prerequisite subject for the engineering major they are pretty much the first year of them master engineering subjects um, that's why for students that has done the same um, disciplines will be able to go straight into the master of engineering 200 points program and the entry and so um, for mechanical system we've got that major in bachelor of science and bachelor of design the minimum requirement is 65 percent WAM or higher um, so that's if you are a Melbourne Uni students, we call them so-called so pathway students. Now for mechatronic, it's only just offered in, within Bachelor of Science. The minimum requirement is also the same, 65% or higher. And again, one, if you do finish a mechatronic system major, you will be able to go straight into Master of Engineering 200 points program. Um, and I don't know if you can see that with Mechatronic, in terms of the prerequisite, again, so first year, it's pretty much the same. With second year, it's essentially just one subject that's different. So if I go back to, so for make it, uh, mechanical, you would have done, you would need numerical method, whereas for Mechatronic, it's engineering computation. So after this slide, I've got a, another slide that kind of show, it will show you if what happened if I'm doing Bachelor of Science and I want to keep both majors open and potentially be able to go into either one of the master degree for the two, 200 points master degree for either one of the, the specialization. Um, so as I mentioned, so if what if the student wants to can't make up their mind want to keep both open and still also just want to finish their master's in two years time. So what potentially you need to do, um, again, obviously you need to do Cal 2 linear algebra and two physics subjects. Um, so over here in the second year, what you want to do is to make sure that obviously you've done 
the required prerequisites such as uh, inch mechanics, foundation electrical networks, inch math. But you see here, that's where we incorporate both prerequisites for the two specializations. So if you were to pick those two, that will kind of allow you to go and pick up those two mechatronic core subjects in your third year. And again, because in your third year, you're supposed to be doing two level three science elective anyway. So normal, sometimes I do recommend students say, if you can't make up your mind, you might as well just do these two. So then by the end of your bachelor degree, you can kind of just decide, okay, do I want to apply for mechatronic or do I want to apply for mechanical? And either way, it will then allow you to enter the 200 points program for either specialization. Okay, what if my course doesn't offer inch major? So, um, as I mentioned previously, all engineering specialization will require the student to have done two math subjects the first year and in terms of the science subject it kind of varies depending on what special specialization you like to do for example as we see mechatronic and mechanical you need to make sure you've done physics but whereas chemical engineering you need to have done two chemistry or let's say bioeng you need to have make sure that you've done biology subjects and with WAM yes it's a minimum of 65 percent except that if today you are a graduate degree package student, the 65% um, WAM won't apply to you. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is where if you do want to head into different specialization, but if you're currently doing a major within your bachelor, that does that is not within the same discipline. So for example, if you are doing like say, uh, if you're a Bachelor of Science student doing a human structure and function, but at the same time, you want to make sure that you keep um, biomedical engineering pathway open, then you want to make sure, obviously, you pick up the math, two math subjects, and then um, most of the uh, most uh, students who's, who majors in human structure and function would have done the biology. Then in that sense that, yes, you have met the prerequisite or entry requirements, one of the entry requirements to get into the 300 points program. Um, and that kind of goes the same if I say, if you want to do, you want to keep mechanical and mechatronics majors open, then you want to make sure you've done two physics. So as I say, if you, you are a student that is doing a major in physics, but you kind of want to keep your options open. So in a way it kind of, you already met you've already met the entry requirement to get into mechatronics or mechanical because obviously in your first year you need to have done two physics and you would have done two math already all right so bachelor of commerce so uh i think a few years ago Mel melbourne uni we offer this sort of um uh we, we have this campaign where if your ATAR is high enough, we offer you a, a graduate degree package. So essentially what you can do is that if you were a commerce student but interested in Master of Engineering 300 points program, you can, because of the Melbourne model, which will allow you to pick up breadth subjects, which um, within the Bachelor of Commerce, that kind of will allow you to like say major in finance or major in, in um, marketing. But at the same time, by the end of commerce, if you do want to go into engineering, that allows you to meet the entry requirement without um, sort of adding on extra year or extra semester. But it kind of requires careful planning and also depending on what sort of majors you want to do because like say some student who would like to do major in accounting but because if you want to meet the accounting accreditation requirement not necessary you'll be able to use the math uh, the, 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 not the necessary you'll be able to do the um, math within the breadth space so um, with Bachelor of Commerce students the student normally can only do a maximum of 37.5 points um, but whereas um, if you were a Bachelor of Commerce student requires to do four you can do that as long as you're a graduate degree package student but you just have to make sure you submit an enrollment variation form just because your study plan won't allow you to do that fourth level one breadth subject 
and also that you might be able to do the extra subject as CAP community access program. So, um, and just keep in mind though, with the, so like I say, over here, I say, if you're GDP student, you're actually able to do four level one breadth subject without doing that extra as CAP. But if today you do have to do um, an extra subject to meet the mass of engineering uh, 300 points pre uh, entry requirement. What we normally get students to do is to contact the Faculty of Engineering just because that subject most potentially will be a, it will be sponsored by the Faculty of Engineering. All right, so apply for admissions. Um, like I keep mentioning, the most important thing to enter Master of Engineering is about you have done the relevant prerequisite. Uh, for the specialization you would like to enter. Um, yes, you do require to submit a formal application online. Um, and generally, this is the website I sort of refer to students to. There are a few different websites that allows you to go into the actual application portal. But I find that this is kind of the quickest way. Um, and then I always encourage students sort of at the end of every semester, come and see us just so we know that you we can check to make sure that you're on track to graduate um, and with uh, the master degree students normally apply in the final year of the study so let's say if you want to enter in um, SEM 1 2022 um, that's where you will probably submit your application sometimes SEM, uh, semester two in semester two this year all right, so on our website, we do have a lot of resources for in terms of uh, planning your courses and subjects. I sometimes just sort of want students to self-direct a little bit on website because a lot of time what you might find is that the answer generally is on the website. But don't stress it if you kind of feel like you're stuck because like I said, you can always book an appointment with a course planner. Um, and if you've got any admin in related inquiry that's where you go and see the in-person support team um and yeah we're always happy to help the students and this is where you will be able to book an appointment with us so um we now offer three type of appointments so we do start having in-person appointments and obviously there's also phone appointments and we also offer virtual appointments but just keep in mind virtual appointments and in-person appointments at the moment it's quite popular so it runs quite quickly but um i think slowly slowly we'll probably open the more um we'll probably have more capacity to do more sort of in-person drop-in i'm uh, sorry in-person appointments um and that's it from me so let me stop sharing first oh we actually have more students joining that's exciting <laughs> Yeah, we've got a few more joined. Thanks so much for that presentation, Christina. Oh, good. Um, just in terms of before we, we go into any questions, Katie, is there anything you wanted to add um, or, or speak about? Or? Um, I think Christina's covered it really well. So if, um, I'm Katie. I work in the Future Students team in the Faculty of Engineering and IT. Um, the part that Christina mentioned about, um, you know, if you're a BCom student and you need to do that extra subject, you would need to speak with um, myself or one of my colleagues. And um, if you're having trouble getting an appointment with Stop One because it's very uh, busy at the moment, we do offer um, Calendly appointments, so Zoom appointments um, that, you know, if it's a course planning thing, Stop One's your place to be. But if it's something um, you just want to check if you might be eligible for admission or that sort of thing, or you're trying to decide between... Um, which course, like whether it's mechatronics or mechanical, um, we can speak to you about that as well because we uh, work very closely with the academics and we speak to students all the time. So the way you would um, make an appointment with us is on the pre-engine IT community website, um, which I'll put a link in the chat. So if you're having yeah, course planning, please go to stop one because Christina and Vika um, way quicker than me. I could sit here and like map it out, but. I, Yep, there's so much um, more across it, but um, for, you know, prereqs, I can help 
decide, like, you know, tell you what they are. Um, but any other questions, if, you know, you're having trouble getting a stop one appointment, we're here for you. And we love chatting to you. So. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you so much, Katie. Yeah, just um, it's it's really interesting to know. It's good to know for students what exactly needs to be done in terms of trying to get into the master's program. And I know it can be confusing. I went through a similar thing as a commerce student myself, trying to figure the whole system all out. And it's, glad, it's so nice that there's all the support from you guys in order to get it, this system working well. Um, I've just had one question come in that was in terms of the, if you're doing a subject or an de undergrad degree that isn't in um, a science degree, and in order to get into mechanics, uh, mechanical or mechatronic engineering, you need to do those two level one physics subjects. What are some examples of those that, that students can get into without any prerequisites? Wait, so, so the student is in Bachelor of Science? So let's just say that the students in Bachelor of Commerce or yep. Bachelor of Design, yep. and they need to do two breadth subjects that are level one physics. What yep. are their options? Options in terms of instead of doing physics, do they have different pathway or is that what the... Yeah, so if, if let's say I was that student and I wanted to do two level one physics subjects to get that 25 point prerequisite uh, to make entry into the 300 point masters yeah what subjects could i do to to get those two uh, physics. physics level one subjects so it's unfortunate that in terms of the subjects they just have to do the physics subjects so the physics one and two um for design students luckily they can do it as a design elective but whereas i say for for example commerce students then they would have to do it as breath. But like I mentioned, with commerce is a bit tricky because for different sort of major within commerce that you might need to keep the breath space for something else. So then not necessarily that they can then do the two physics subject as their breath. Then in that sense, then they would have to do it as cap subject, unfortunately. Then they're not going to be able to do it as a bachelor of subjects and get sort of cover within that CSP place. So that's why when it comes to things like that, that's normally we will want the student to come and speak to us. So then we can obviously look into different case and looking at the options. But then if absolutely there is no space within their bachelor, they would have to do a community access program instead. Awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, good. There's also the option which Community access program is the preferred option because you're, you're doing the content that the University of Melbourne students are doing, but we do have some online approved subjects, um, which, yeah, if you get really, really stuck, that's the second option. But we, yeah, CAP would be... Yeah, your breath first and cap would be your way to go. Because <laughs> I know for, for, for software engineering, for example, I do know there are some online sort of programs that students can do. But from the course planning perspective, we normally don't push it just because they are the foundation subjects and you're sort of across your discipline. I would rather you to have that solid foundation instead of unless you're a genius in like say IT space then go ahead um, but otherwise we kind of want the student to understand what the expectation is and so that they have that solid foundation when they enter the master program yeah mm. yeah we usually only as Christina said the online is like if you're in your third year and suddenly have been inspired to join end and it's like your breadth already all being used up like that's where we might um, use that sort of yeah as an option, but it's, yeah, in your best interest to not do it that way. <laughs> Think about it early. <laughs> awesome, thank you. So, uh, yeah, I haven't had any more questions come in from my side, and if there's, unless there's anyone, any more questions from anyone else that's attending here, um, I think then we probably won't go on to talking to Angus about his experiences because everyone in here, um, Oh, actually, Angus, we, we might still do that if that's all right, if you're still in here and listening. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great. Awesome. So I just, just got a couple of questions because basically the next part of this presentation is to ask and try and get current students some tips and tricks on to what worked for them as, as undergrads and what, what helped them get into their degree. So Nishant is also here to, to help out with questions as well, I see. So if, if you're available to Nishant, that would be great if you could answer a few quick questions too. Yeah, sure. But, um, sure.
basically, I guess the first question I have is just if you could give a brief introduction about yourself, what you're currently studying and what undergrad program you did. Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, I'm Nishan, uh, that's what Sean said, and I'm currently doing master's in mechanical with business. I'm currently in my final semester and hopefully I should be done with my degree next uh, month. And I've done my undergrad in bachelor's of technology in mechanical as well, uh, but I've done it overseas back in India uh, from, uh, from where I am from. Yeah, Thanks, sorry. Um, oh, sorry. All right, you go for it, Angus. Yeah, sorry. So um, my name's Angus. I am um, in a master of um, mechanical engineering at the moment. I previously completed a bachelor of science majoring in mechanical systems. So I went through that much more sort of traditional very straightforward pathway of I chose my mechanical systems major in my first or second year and stuck with that and did my um, core elective subjects in my third year. And I'm now doing um, in my final year of a 200 point, um, I believe, um, master's program. I didn't, because I did all my subjects in my undergrad, I didn't have to fulfill extra subject requirements in my postgraduate degree. Awesome. Thanks, Angus. And then just for you, Angus, specifically, what did you do during your undergraduate degree that in hindsight has helped you prepare for the master's course? I think just making sure that you pay attention and really put, get that work and study ethic in your undergrad is probably what can help you the most in your master's. The master's program isn't really that different to the undergrad program in a lot of ways. It's just um, the subjects are, have more content. They're more intense only slightly, but if, if you find that you can manage your workload and um, learn good study techniques in your undergrad, you, you'll probably um, do just as well, if not better, in your the postgrad program. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like those are really, really good, good foundations and tricks to, for students to, to work on. Um, Nishant, this one's for you, but in, in your opinion, what is a key topic or subject that you studied in your undergraduate degree that has proved very helpful in the master's program? Um, I think personally for me, the basic subject, which is like kind of universal for mechanical students is, was the thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. So I think it's pretty much basic for everyone who has done mechanical or even uh, bachelors of science, I guess. So that was one subject that really helped me during my master's because uh, I did advanced subjects as well during my master's. And I think because of that, it, proved, um, it actually made my base for uh, many of the subjects that really helped me during, during my master's here. Awesome. Angus, do you have anything to add to that question? Yeah, so I think that um, for me, the, the subject in my undergrad that probably was, I guess, the most important was um, back when I did it, it was called mechanical design. But I believe mechanical systems design is quite a similar one. And that's your first sort of, um, for many people at least, and me, it was your first go at a um, proper design-based subject where you, you have a project, you have a team, you um, from start to finish have a very open-ended design problem and you come up with a viable solution, which is, um, I, I believe it's still the warmer design and build competition, but I think that was a very fun subject, very different to your other thermodynamics or fluid mechanics or um, circuit subjects. And I think that kind of open-ended nature and the fact that it was um, very much applying everything you'd learned throughout your undergrad was something I really enjoyed. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I agree to him, yeah, because, but I did that during my master's here, so, uh, so I, I could add it to my bachelor's. Yeah, no, fair enough. And, and a lot of students I've spoken to have, have similarly found that the more effort they put into those design subjects, the, the better it kind of, it, it, it keeps them in the long term at least. Uh, I guess the last question that I have for both of you is, um, do you have any study tips or tricks that have helped you thrive during your master's program uh, or anything, anything other tip, tips uh, that could help students? Yeah, I think it's to make um, make sure you've got heaps of mates in your um, in your degree and in your classes, so you can um, study with them, talk about um, talk about the content, chat about assignments, um, and really form that sort of community within your degree that really motivates you to study. You can learn off each other, and I think um, it creates a sort of much more enjoyable environment because it is challenging at times. Um, uh, having a full or even part-time load at university and juggling other commitments. So if you can have 
if you can do all that while having fun with your mates and all supporting each other, I think that's one of the ways that's really helped me throughout the degree. Yeah, I would just say to like, yeah, have some connections, uh, have some networking, uh, talk to your seniors, like they're really helpful. Uh, you can get some notes and maybe uh, some study materials from them and guidance, of course, like how you can do well with the subject. So um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The mechanical engineering community here with the students and, and staff included is, is pretty awesome. So tapping into that is definitely a huge, a huge must and definitely helps a lot of people through, through their degree. So that's pretty much all the questions I, I have to ask. Um, unless there's anything else from the floor, we'll, we'll probably wrap it up in, in, in a bit. But um, yeah, so we'll just, we'll just leave a little bit for any questions, but we haven't had anything coming through at the moment. So yeah, if that's, if that's the case and there's no more questions that come in while I do this little um, finish, spiel then um, thank you so much for for coming today and thanks so much specifically to christina victoria and katie for coming in and and helping us out christina your presentation was awesome and, and i'm sure there'll be many students that find it very very helpful we 